Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. If you're not a current subscriber, I hope you'll consider subscribing today and sign up for notifications for future videos that I post. All right, let's get to it. We're going to learn about probability today. So our objectives today are that you are going to understand the concept of probability. Then we're going to find the probability of events. And finally, we're going to make a connection between the relationship of probability and likelihood. So when you find probability, you're finding a value, a numerical value, the likelihood the event will happen. And then we're going to use likelihood to describe the, the probable outcome of the event. So you're going to learn two things, how to describe probability with a word and how to find the exact um, probability that an event will happen. So here's what I want you thinking about today as we go through the lesson is how could you describe the likelihood of an event? So I want that in the back of your mind because that's our end goal, right? We're going to use that when we're all done and we understand probability. So let's talk about finding probability now. So there's two things that we need to do when we're finding probability. We need to identify the total number of outcomes that can occur. So the first example I'm going to show you on the next slide is rolling a number cube. So understanding that the number of outcomes that can occur on a six-sided dice are the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. There are six different outcomes. So every time you roll a number cube, there are six different things that could happen. And then the second thing you need to understand is that the number of possible, so the number of events by the number of possible outcomes. So if you want to roll a two, the number of times that that can happen on one single roll is once. There's only one side of the die with a two. So the favorable outcome would be rolling a two, but there's only one of those out of a possible six. So here's our ratio. Probability is a ratio. So we say the probability of an event. So the example I just explained to you would be rolling a two. That would be replaced where the event here is. The favorable outcome would have been one because there's only one two. And the possible outcomes would be a six. So the probability of rolling a two is one out of six. So now let's look at this now that we've talked through this. We have our standard number cube. But now we're going to change this to be, I'm going to give you your ratio. So this is what you're using. And we're going to talk about what is the probability that we're going to roll an odd number. So that's our event. Our event is rolling an odd number when we roll a standard die. So when we talk about this, we want to find out how many favorable outcomes. So how many sides of the six-sided die have odd numbers? And they're all actually shown here for you. One, three, and five. There are three different sides with odd values. Now, our bottom, our denominator, we want to know how many of these are possible outcomes that when we roll the die. There are six different sides to the die. So there are six things that can happen when my goal is this event, but there are six different outcomes. So we have six outcomes when we roll a number cube because there's six possible sides or possible numbers that we'll roll, but we're looking for an odd. So if we want an odd number, there are three favorable outcomes for that because there are three sides to this die that are odd. So we write our ratio, our probability of our event of rolling an odd is going to be three odds, right? One, three, and five out of six different sides. We're always going to simplify, and that would be one half. So one half written as a decimal, 0.5, and as a percent is 50%. So we could say that we have a 50% chance of rolling an odd, or you could say you have a one in two chance of rolling an odd. All are correct. There's not one that's more favorable than the other as far as answering, whether you answer with a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. It really depends on your teacher or how the question is written. Typically, I like my students to leave it as a fraction just because it's easier. It's a ratio and all they got to do is simplify it in one less step. So your turn. I would like you to find the probability of rolling a number cube and getting a five. Go ahead and pause and come back and join me again when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So. The possible outcomes did not change. There's still just six outcomes. There's six different sides to the die. 
but only one side of the die has a five on it. So when you roll a number cube, you have a one in six chance of rolling a five. So the probability of rolling a five is one out of six. So now we have a spinner. And I'm gonna ask you to think about the ratio and the favorable outcomes versus the possible outcomes. And come back and join me when you're ready. Go ahead and pause. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So first I'm gonna talk about the number of possible outcomes, the denominator of our ratio. This is what we call a fair spinner because each section is the same size. So it's equally likely that we could land on blue, red, or yellow. So there are three different outcomes. There's three different sections to the spinner, each a different color. So when you spin the spinner, you could land on blue or red or yellow. So our denominator is gonna be three. But the event we're looking for is to spin and have it land on yellow, and only one section is yellow. So the probability of spinning yellow is one out of three. All right, now you're gonna look at a bag of marbles, and you're gonna use the same concept that we've been using. You're gonna find the favorable outcomes to picking a solid black marble from this bag out of the possible outcomes. Good luck, go ahead and hit pause. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So the possible outcomes are all the marbles in the bag. So three, six, and another four is 10. So there are 10 marbles in this bag. And our event that we're hoping to happen is that we're gonna pick a solid black marble. There are two solid black marbles. So two out of the 10 marbles are black. We're gonna simplify that and it's one out of five. So the probability of drawing at random a solid black marble out of this bag of marbles, you have a one in five chance. All right, so now you can use what you know about proportional relationships to solve using when you've been given the probability of an event happening. So here we have somebody holding a bunch of straws and if we're saying that there's a group of 60 straws and the probability of you drawing one of those straws and it being a short straw is five out of 20. So that's the probability of it happening. So I'm holding 60 straws and you have a five in 20 chance of drawing a short straw. So how many of those 60 saw, straws are short straws? So go ahead and pause and see if you can use what you know about proportional relationships to solve this. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So we are gonna go through, we know that our probability of drawing a short straw is five out of 20. And now we've been told that there are a total of 60 straws that we're picking from. So we know that the probability ratio when simplified is equivalent to five out of 20. So we can use what we know about cross products property to form our equation, 20, times x is equal to five times 60, which is 300. Divide both sides by 20 to solve for x, and x equals 15. So I can conclude that of the 60 straws, 15 of them are short straws, and that makes sense. If we knew there were 15 short straws out of 60 straws and we asked what the probability was, we would simplify 15 out of 60, which simplifies to five, well, it simplifies further, but five out of 20 is equivalent. So really this simplifies to one in four. So we have a one in four or a 25% chance of drawing a short, short straw. All right, here we are, we're finally at the end. We're gonna describe probability. So the probability of an event is the likelihood that the event will occur. Probability is always greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. So when you find it as your ratio, it's greater than one, greater than zero, sorry, and less than one. Probability can be referred to as that value or as a percent. So you can convert your ratio to a decimal to a percent. But let's look at this likelihood diagram. So we can say there are five different ways that typically we refer to as probability. We can say, we'll start in the middle, that something is equally likely. So if you flip a coin, for example, it's equally likely that you're gonna land on, that when you flip it, it lands on heads or it lands on tails. So you have a 50-50 chance or a 50%, one out of two, equally likely. 
Now, if something is impossible, so let's say we have a standard number cube and I say, well, what's the probability of you rolling a 10? Well, if you only have one number cube, it's impossible. You can't roll a 10 because there's only the numbers one through six on your number cube. So the probability of that happening is zero, but it's never gonna be less than zero, okay? Now, if I ask you, what is the chance that the sun's gonna rise tomorrow morning? That's pretty certain. I know there's, you know, you could talk about the apocalypse or something, but it's pretty certain the sun is gonna rise tomorrow. So that probability is one or 100%. My students often have a hard time thinking about this being one, but remember 100% when written as a decimal is one. All right, and then we go into a one in four chance is unlikely. So if it's 25% chance that it's gonna rain tomorrow, it's unlikely that it's gonna rain. It's not impossible, but it's unlikely. And then if we say that you have a 75% chance of something happening, it's likely, it's not certain, but it's likely. So really the hardest thing that comes through this is that if you've got something in the middle of one of these and you're trying to figure out how to describe it. Quite honestly, most of the times when you're going to describe something, it's gonna be pretty obvious which one it is and you're just gonna to have to use your best judgment. So if it's in between here, you wanna pick whichever one it's closer to. If it's starting to get close to 50%, then you could say it's equally likely. And if it's closer to 25%, then you know you're approaching unlikely. So you just need to be careful that when you're using things like impossible and certain that it's really close to zero or 100. All right, so here's some more opportunities to think about things. You'll roll an eight when you roll a number cube on a one. When you will draw a red marble from a bag of red marbles. So if all the marbles in the bag are red, you have a 100% chance you're certainly gonna draw a red marble. Flipping a coin is a good uh, example of equally likely, okay? So now I've given you your benchmark here, your likelihood meter, and I'm gonna ask you to pause and complete each one of these four and see if you can use this little likelihood diagram to describe the events of these things happening. So go ahead and hit pause and come back and hit play when you're ready to check. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So let's talk about you will grow six feet this year. That's impossible. People don't grow six feet in one year. The, you know, most humans aren't even six feet tall. So it's impossible that you're going to grow six feet in one year. Then when we're talking about you winning six out of your eight soccer games this season, we could say that's likely because six over eight simplifies to three over four, which is likely. Tomorrow, the temperature will be above zero degrees at recess. Well, I don't know where you live, unless you're living at the North Pole, it's pretty certain that the temperature at recess is gonna be above zero degrees. And again, this one, you know, is a play on it. When I'm doing it with my students where we live, we know for certain it's gonna be above zero degrees at recess time. So, but if you live somewhere that's really, really super cold and it's during the winter time, then you're not gonna say certain. And then the last one is it rains seven out of the 31 days in July. Well, if you look at this ratio, you're going to say that it's unlikely because seven out of 31 is really close to 25%. So that is unlikely, okay, that it's going to rain in July. So that's our lesson on probability. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and that you'll come back to hear more about theoretical and experimental probability soon. Have a great day.